to the press conference following this non-stop European Council. Thank you for your patience. The President of the European Council and the President of the European Commission is joined by the Chancellor of Germany. Willkommen. Thank you for your patience once again. We have translation into six languages, French, English, German, Spanish, Italian and Dutch. We'll have a Q&A, but first I give the floor to the President of the European Council. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much and a good morning, everyone. Now, this European Council was a marathon session. There were lots of difficult topics on the agenda, important issues for the future of the European Union. And I have to say that after several hours of very intense discussion, we have taken a big step forward for the European Union in various areas. Now, if you'll remember, a year ago exactly, in December of last year, we met here in Brussels and we were talking about climate neutrality with a view to 2050 for the EU and uh, that would mean that we would be taking leadership in the climate transition which is so important to Europe and to the rest of the world. Now, in December last year, who could have thought that at the start of 2020 we would have been confronted with uh, this uh, terrible shock, COVID-19? It was difficult. It was uh, very demanding. The various institutions of the European Union had to get together with the member states, and no one could have uh, imagined that a, a year later we'd be in this situation. Less than a year later, we'd be here discussing the development of vaccines, uh, unprecedented mobilization of uh, vaccines to protect Europeans and the rest of the world. So the first thing I would like to say here is that we have had the capacity to reach an agreement to get together in order to implement the multi-annual financial framework and the recovery fund we uh, established or talked about in July. I would like to pay tribute to Chancellor Angela Merkel on this topic in particular because she really rolled up her sleeves. She got down to work um, with uh, a great deal of commitment to do this for Europe. And thanks to all the preparations before the Council and in the course of this meeting, we have been able to come up with this nice surprise, this big step forward. And that means that as the EU, we have the financial capacity to do this. We have the budget, but we have this recovery fund as well now so that we can face the digital transition, the green transition. We can support SMEs. We can support our citizens and families as well, because COVID has been a big shock. And we need to work together cohesively. We need to invest. We need to reform together. We need to meet the same targets together. And in that way, governance issues, uh, rule of law issues, issues which the Parliament has been very interested in can be taken into account as well, because this is at the very heart of our whole project in Europe. Now, we have reached an agreement on how we should move forward on COVID-19 vaccines, mutual recognition of tests, and we feel that the next crucial stage here will be our ability to manage the distribution of these vaccines together throughout Europe and uh, elsewhere in the world so that people can have uh, fair and equitable access. Now, on the climate issue, well, let's just say that uh, quite a lot of last night was spent discussing this. It wasn't easy. No, not at all easy, actually, because the Commission was very ambitious. They wanted to increase our ambitions, a reduction of 55 per cent by 2030, which means that our 2050 commitment is credible. It means that we in Europe uh, would have a leadership role to play. And very soon we will be celebrating the fifth anniversary of this commitment made in Paris, the Paris Agreements. And we have been firmly committed as an EU, uh, as a European Union from the very outset. This is a very positive battle in the field of climate diplomacy to bring in other parts of the world, to get them to jump on the bandwagon and come up 
uh, with common standards and share our ambitions. We have been able to define a number of points of principle to help us achieve these objectives, the European Union, with the member states, define how we're going to work together along with the European Commission, which has a key, key role here in submitting specific proposals so that we are able to actually implement the commitments we have made. And we're very pleased that in the UN we will be able to express our confidence and our unity in Europe on our climate ambitions. And there are other issues, international issues, relationship between uh, Europe and the U.S. following the recent U.S. elections. And uh, we want to be able to identify certain topics so that we uh, can redevelop an ambitious alliance with a country which is a friend and an ally and with whom we share some very strong and solid values. And we would like to further develop our partnership with them in various sectors in the future. And we have multi. We want to stress the importance of multilateral cooperation on the international agenda, because this is something which is at the very core of the EU. Now, relations with our eastern partners, Turkey, that's a difficult situation, of course. And we know that there's a key issue here when it comes to defending our geopolitical interests in the medium and long term. But in the short term, of course, we have to uh, adopt certain guidelines, and that's what we've done, picking up on the decisions reached in October. We had two options proposed in uh, October, a positive option, a more restrictive one. We've evaluated the situation, and you see what our conclusions are and the decision taken. And we were also able to confirm the preparatory work which had been carried out uh, diplomatically in the field in terms of security and combating uh, terrorism. We didn't need to discuss these issues at great length because we did spend a lot of time on the other points, as you can well imagine. And we had the southern neighborhood uh, discussion as well this morning. Christine uh, Lagarde came to us, and we had a very important exchange of views in the context of the Eurozone Summit. And we talked about how we can work together to promote economic recovery above and beyond the budgetary side of things. That's been validated now, of course, but the idea is how can we continue to encourage finance ministers so that we can continue to make progress in the field of uh, banking union and capital markets union as well. No, there are a couple of points. I'm not going to go on at any great length here, but I would just like to say that I am very firmly convinced that uh, our meeting has been very important because we are coming to the end of 2020. It's been an extraordinary year in the strictest sense of the word because uh, uh, everything has changed and shifted, and it means that we've had to call into question all sorts of things that we knew from before. And this Council has been an opportunity to show that we work together and calm in a calm and confident fashion. And this is how we want to ensure the EU can get onto track again. We are talking about difficult issues sensitive issues. Uh, this did require a great deal of effort. I would like to thank the heads of state of government and their teams for all the work done and all the support we've had from the European Commission as well. They have fed into our work and have uh, helped uh, the German presidency in their leadership role. Over the past six months, I have very much enjoyed uh, working practically on a daily basis, certainly on a weekly basis, with Angela Merkel. And centimetre by centimetre, we've been able to take things forward in the 